Ever since I was a child, I have loved video games, and one of my favorite things to do was to download as many demos as possible on my Xbox 360. The idea of being able to play unknown stuff that might be good was just super fun to me, and so I have decided to go back to those days and share it with you. In this video, I will be playing 10 demos I chose based solely on a couple of screenshots, so I basically didn't know anything about them. I played on stream here on YouTube, so if you ever want to watch some streams, have them play on the background or something, you can check them out. I will also recommend playing or not playing the games, and well, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Your support keeps me motivated to keep going. Enjoy. First and best on the list is... Little Goody Two Shoes it's perfect for this. The aesthetics with the with the overlay, it's so good. I fucking love it. This looks so fun. <laughs> this actually looks so fun. Okay, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. That this looks so good. This looks so fucking fun. Holy shit. You have no idea how glad I am that I picked this game as one of the 10 that I would play. The game is made by Astral Shift, a developer who seems to have only made one other game, Pocket Mirror. I have never played that game, nor have I heard of the developer. Little Goody Two Shoes has a 90s anime art style. A quick look at the main character instantly made me think of Little Red Riding Hood, which hey, they both share the little in the titles. However, the title actually comes from a children's story with the same title published in 1765 by an anonymous author. The opening scene was beautiful. It uses the good old animated book opening, which what I mean is basically an animation of a fairy tale book with music and some voice acting. Speaking of voice acting, you can set the game to either English or Japanese. I don't know if there will be other languages available on release, but even if there are, I would always recommend going with Japanese, especially since it fits the style perfectly. You are thrown right into the world once the opening is over and you meet the main character, Elise. Some guys approach you to ask why you are outside so late at night and you learn of the witch. Apparently she is quite dangerous and you should be careful with where you go, especially at night. So you finally get home and you realize there is something wrong about it. Someone was inside. You have to find your matches to light on your lantern, you go upstairs and... Oh my... <laughs> What the fuck was that shit? Bro, it's been two minutes and I'm already facing fucking Eldritch Horrors. Tinderbox. Honestly, I was surprised. And right after... So much for Saint Walpurga's protection. Ah, uh, chat. <laughs> Interesting bit of information. Saint Walpurga is a real figure in human history and Walpurgisnacht is a real rite performed by people in past times. So not only does this game draw inspiration from fairy tales but also from real folklore. You continue and shortly after you meet one of the three romance options in the story. Rosen Marin, the girl who accidentally made a mess of your house and who pretty clearly looks like a witch. You scold her, she helps you, you help her and now you must go to church and attend the Sunday Mass. Here you meet the other romantic interests, Freya, a cute girl and friend of yours, and Lekuchen, your childhood friend, and I probably butchered her name. Within the church you find out a little more about these people's religion and their subject of worship, Saint Walpurga, and oh boy do you find out more about it. You find this piece of paper with a prayer written on it, a mention of a place and a symbol drawn on it, a symbol which... Yep, and we've seen this chat, we've seen that. And now you get some free time. The game has a system similar to Persona, where you have time periods during a day during which you can perform different actions. For example, work to earn some money at jobs that are actually minigames, which was pretty fun, or go on a date with one of your love interests. Every action you perform makes the time go by, so there are limited actions you can perform every single day. Also, you have a food meter which depletes every period of time that passes by. Don't worry though, you can buy food with the money you made before and just eat it. Then you go to the place marked by the drawing you saw previously and find a weird chamber. And even weirder, you find... Diary entry spread within the windmill that once was the old windmill. We know how to get there. And there is a red ribbon. Oh shit. No, 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 bitch. Oh my god, am I. Eh? What the fuck? Open it! It's locked! Oh shit! Yuck this motherfucker! We gotta yuck this motherfucker! We gotta yuck this motherfucker! Ain't no way! Ain't no way! Ain't no way! Ain't no way! 
Ain't no way I'm getting that shit. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. I've gotta say, the horror in this game is handled really well, since it is just a demo, you only scratch the surface of it, but that's a really nice surface, enough to make me want to see more. You go back home, spend some time with Ross and Marin, who casually says she saw the future in which she was together with you, and then you hear something. You go outside and you find a girl. Here you are introduced to the saucy mirror, which the more it increases, the more people will be suspicious of you, and I assume they will burn you like a witch if they do. So now there's another thing to look out for, so make sure you do what you have to in order to not be a saucy baka. You go to sleep and you enter what I call the nightmare world. I'm not even sure if this is the actual name, but this is what I call it. Within this nightmare world, you find the three tentacle thing again, and it makes you wonder where exactly the line between dream and reality lies within this universe. This place also makes me think of Alice in Wonderland, one fucked up piece of literature, which is also really fucking good and offers lots of inspiration for other pieces. For example, this room right here, which, I'll be honest, I seem to become really stupid when I play on stream, and it took me way too long to find the last key that I needed. After you open the door and move on to the next room, you encounter what I can only describe as a seen strange out of Madoka Magica. See for yourself, you will love it. And shivers down my fucking body. That's the end of my dream. I'm surprised the demo lasts for so I can't explain with words how much I love this scene. It was so cute, beautiful, eerie, scary, unsettling, exciting, and many more things. And the music that plays during it was just as good as the visuals. Also, this game has some amazing music that perfectly fits the aesthetics, the tone, and feelings it wants you to feel, which of course helps towards achieving that goal. Then you wake up and move on with your life. You go outside and find a box with a pair of shoes inside. In the original story, the main character only has one single shoe, and eventually some rich guy gives her a complete set, which she loves and goes to town to tell everyone that she now has two shoes. Then the demo ends. First, I fucking love the game. The art style, the music, the characters, the story, the horror, the nightmare world, the mysteries, the everything. I found some random video from six years ago where a girl talks about an upcoming game called Little Goody Two Shoes, so I don't really know how and why this game took six years to make, but those six years are noticeable from what I could play. It's just a demo, but it was so good. I will be playing the game on stream once it comes out, and I will probably dedicate a video to it. And I, of course, recommend that if you have some money to spend on the game, you give this one a try. This game would also benefit so much from better marketing, since I have not heard a single thing about either the developer or the games they've made. Again, it took six years to make, so maybe they don't really have that much money to invest into marketing, especially since the game is really high quality, which probably took a lot of their budget. But the publisher is Square Enix, so listen. I think it's an amazing game and I don't know anything else about it. But it just bothers me so much to see something this good not get the attention it deserves due to poor marketing or whatever else. Maybe everyone was aware of this game coming out except for me and I'm just wrong. Either case, if you are looking for a high quality, not so expensive game to play, this is perfect for you. And if you are not looking for those things, still, please give this game a try if you have the money. It will release on October 31st for 20 US dollars in basically every single platform. I wish I could talk more about this game, but I'll have to wait until after I finish it. It's already been 1400 words used for the first game, but it deserves them and more. Little goody to choose, I love this game and more people should know about it. Please buy it if you can, I promise you will love it. Also, it has 10 endings, can't wait to get every single one of them. The second game is something many of you will recognize. It is Crime Scene Cleaner. The premise is that your daughter is in a hospital and you need money to help her, so you do what any sane man would do become a crime scene cleaner. Now, I thought this was gonna be about cleaning crime scenes after the crime because, well, that's what has to be done. No one wants fucking blood splattered everywhere. However, I was wrong. You are literally a fucking cleaner. Your job is not to clean the crime scene to keep things clean. No, you do it in order to get rid of the evidence and make sure the person who did it gets away with it. And of course, you get paid for it. It's not deep and the little story there is won't really be the highlight of the game. Little Goody to Shoes is a great game that you actively play. Crime scene cleaner is 
is a very chill game which you can passively play. What I mean is that you don't need to pay too much attention to what you are doing and just go about it mindlessly. I personally find this to be a positive because not every game has to be packed up with action, a good story or crazy mechanics. Some games are there just to give you a moment of relaxation and this game does just that. Would I recommend it? If you have the money and there is nothing else you wanna buy? Sure. I wouldn't say it's worth buying over other games, but I also can't say I didn't like it. I would never buy this over the first game, little goody to choose, but I would definitely buy it over the next 7 games. Also, if you stream, it is a really good game, since you don't need to pay too much attention to it, you can instead talk about stuff or chat with your viewers if that is a privilege you enjoy. There is not really a lot to talk about this game, you clean stuff, get rid of bodies, fix what is broken and steal some shit. You basically get exactly what you pay for and that is a good thing. Crimes and Cleaner will release sometime during 2024, it is a super simple game which is good for when you just wanna chill and nothing more. The third game is Japanese Dorif Tomasta. I will be honest, I chose this game because of the initial D memes. The music that plays during the gameplay would have copyrighted me to hell and back so I disabled it. Having said this, the game itself isn't really good. With so many racing games out there, there is a lot of competition and you have to offer something and this game does not. The physics are decent at most, you can drift and that's it. If you crash, the only thing that happens is that your drift score stops so there won't be any visual impact to it. You can easily push other cars out of the way even if it does break your score and I'm not even sure if there are races in the game. You can play some beat the time type of race but an actual race against AI, well I'm not sure that is a thing here. Not only that but the graphical quality isn't anything to praise. This was just a demo, but let's be honest, nowadays most demos are basically the game as it ships, however I will say that we shouldn't reach a conclusion about this game's quality based solely on their demos. Still, this was pretty boring, it doesn't really offer anything new or unique and the things that it does offer are better handled by other games. Its release date is unknown, so maybe my opinion could change in the future, however today my opinion is that I didn't like it, I didn't have fun and I am not interested in playing more of it. The quality can increase tenfold and it might by the time it releases, but that is to be seen. The next and fourth game is Gunhead. This game is exactly what I thought it would be, the game basically has you getting into a mech and shoot things. That's it. The art style is kind of similar to Borderlands maybe? At least it seems that way to me, you can tell me what you think in the comments. The gameplay is smooth, the enemies are fine, the weapons are easy to use and seem to offer different stuff, you can get different buffs and skills and you have to find a boss and kill it. The one I fought had a shield around him which had me going through different rooms destroying stuff so that the shield would go down. Then I had to go back and kill the now vulnerable boss. It's an extremely simple game, if you like shooting and killing things then maybe you find this appealing. But in my case I just wouldn't buy it. This game will release on November 8th for an unknown price. It's not bad but it's not good, it's just decent. I will say though, it is a game that I would enjoy and have fun playing when I was 12 years old on my old iPod. So it's not my cup of tea at this age, can't personally recommend, but I can definitely see this game being fun for some people. Next on the list we've got 3 minutes to 8. This is a loop game with 24 minutes each where you have to find out how to escape dead by repeating everything over and over again. You might already know this type of games, I don't know if it's a genre and if it has a name but it's one of those and it apparently has around 10 endings. It costs 10 US dollars and it's already out. It's worth mentioning the price is after I converted the game's cost in my country so it might be a little off. I'll be honest I'm not into this type of games, I don't want to repeat the same stuff over and over again to reach an ending and I would certainly never try to get every single possible out the art style is nice and the concept is nothing new but still interesting. I can't really recommend playing it or not since it's something I just wouldn't, so I'll have to say if you like these loop games where you repeat the same day trying to piece everything together through dialogue, visual clues and through every that you experience then you might like it. I do genuinely believe it's a nice concept with value to it and I'm sure it's fun for those into this type of stuff. I am 100% biased in what I'm about to say but I don't recommend this game. Again, I say this because I simply don't like this genre but you might be interested in it. The next one is a disappointment, Sky Children of the Light. I didn't play the game because you need to make an account for it and I just really didn't want to do it. From what I could see though, the game seems like another chill game. Crime Scene Cleaner was chill because you don't need to pay attention to it, Sky Children of the Light is chill because it offers some really nice views in what seems like a completely harmless world. I didn't play it so there might be some hostility I don't know of. The game is also an MMO so it makes sense that you have to make an account to play it. My viewer Rose mentioned how one of her friends likes to play the mobile version of the game so it definitely has people interested in it. I guess if you wanna find some people in a tranquil world where you can just walk together this might be for you. 
I don't even know if there is a goal you must reach in this game, but whether or not it has one, I wouldn't play it. Again, my biased opinion is that I wouldn't recommend this game since it's just not something appealing to me. I didn't get to play it and I'm not gonna make an account for a game I'm gonna play for 20 minutes, so no real opinion on this one. I guess if you don't mind the account stuff, you can give it a try. To be completely honest, it does look really nice, but that's as much as I'm gonna say. Next, we have Fatal Zone. I want to start off by saying I chose this because it looked like it was a bullet hell type of game, a genre I enjoyed a lot when I was little. It costs less than $5 so it won't really destroy your wallet in any way and I didn't like it. I just straight up got bored after like 20 seconds, you can't aim which is something I don't like and well I was expecting myself to have fun the same way I did 12 years ago, <laughs> not to say that bullet hells are no longer something I enjoy, that would just be a lie, but this game just didn't catch my attention. If you go to the stream in which I played these games, you will see that I played this one for like 2 minutes. Really, it was like 2 minutes. Bullet Hells are nice, but I'm extremely picky about them. I wouldn't say it's because of some objective reason, rather it's just 100% based on my own preferences and whether or not I have fun from the very beginning all the way to the end. 2 minutes. That's how long this game had my attention for. I wouldn't recommend it since there are amazing bullet hell games out there that offer way more than Fatal Zone, however it goes for like 4 US dollars. If you like this genre and like to support small developers, then maybe give it a try. I don't think it will be anything special to anyone who plays it, but the only one who can decide that is yourself. It's whatever. It's a... It's... It's just... Next, Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. Yet another bullet hell that didn't catch my attention. In this one you mine stuff and you shoot stuff. I played it for longer than 2 minutes but I basically hold the same opinion I had for Fatal Zone towards this game. It just doesn't grab my attention and I can't see myself having fun with this. I don't recommend this one either. And that is all I have to say about this game. I'm sorry. What happens if I die? I wanna see what happens if I die. I can't even die, it's not even hitting me. I am... Wait, did I actually bug the game? Oh my god, I'm actually in mortal chat or something. The ninth game is Enshrouded. I wanna make this one quick. It's the same thing we've seen multiple times by now. Open world, you can play online or offline, you collect stuff, survive, build, craft and explore. I can't tell you the amount of games that have been trying to find success by doing this same thing and just like most others, it was boring. It's just a demo and it can eventually improve, but I'm here to judge the demo. I know what to expect from this game so I don't have any interest in playing through it just to end up having the same experience other games similar to it offer. I think the only game like this that actually seems interesting to me is Ark and even then I'd rather play something else. I believe the problem here is innovation. Like I said already, these games are mostly the same and offer nothing new. I can't get excited or look forward to playing a game that I probably already know how it's gonna be. I honestly thought this was gonna be a good game and I ended up leaving disappointed before even finishing the job. It got me hyped up when I saw some screenshots just to realize it was back in a 3 incher and no use. Maybe it will be better on release but for now I can't recommend this one either. Remaining time 7 hours 51 minutes. I didn't even see that. Like on the bottom left you can see how long the demo has left. 7 hours and 51 minutes bro. I had... I would, If I had done this tomorrow I wouldn't have been able to play the, the demo. Nothing that makes me want to go. Just nothing that makes me want to keep going, okay? That's how it is. Uh, Enshrouded, you are getting uninstalled. Uninstalled. For the last game, we've got Ghost Runner 2. If you have played Ghost Runner 1, then you are gonna like the second one. And before I continue, I wanna say that if you are really good at the game and like speedrunning stuff, there is a competition going on made by speedrun.com offering a $10,000 prize. Moving on. The game has you running through the level you are at and killing everything you see. You are basically a super ninja on a mission. From what I played in the demo, every enemy dies in one hit and you yourself also die in one hit. So the goal here is to improve your movement and skill use to the point in which you can young wick the entire game whilst feeling like an absolute badass. Also, the first game had bosses which didn't die in one hit, so this game probably is the same. Now, if you were to go to my stream where I play these games, you might notice my not so big enjoyment of this game as well as my not too positive opinion on it. Let me explain. While I was playing these games, most of them had the depression debuff, where I wasn't feeling the best so I was being a little harsh on them. 
all of my opinions remain though, except for this one. Ghost Runner 2 also had another debuff while I was playing it, and that was the I am holding a massive lock in my ass debuff. After I ended the stream, I took a massive shit and my mind was able to cool down, which led to my opinion changing. So now I will say I think Ghost Runner 2 is a nice game and I recommend it. It's another very simplistic game, this time with more complex mechanics. It's one of those games that when you see a pro playing them, you question whether or not you play the same game. If you like an action packed game where you have to improve your skills to the limits to beat everything as efficiently as possible, then you are going to love this one. I personally still place Little Goody to Shoes as the best from the list, but I'll give this one and Crime Scene Cleaner a draw in second place. Ghost Runner 1 was a successful game and so will Ghost Runner 2 and they deserve the success. They are good games, they are not that expensive and they just feel nice to play as well as being fun. Ghost Runner 2 is already out and it goes for 30 US dollars. It's 100% worth your money and your time. However, if you don't want to play a game that has you pushing yourself to improve, you might not like it. Otherwise, really good game, the visuals are amazing, the gameplay is super smooth and fun, you can ride a fucking ninja bike, which was also extremely fun, and you can look and feel like a badass. It's just a good game, okay? I definitely recommend it and I would definitely play more of it. Hell, I might actually play on my own to see how fast I can beat it. Oh my lord, oh my god, oh Jesus Christ, oh my god. My goodness gracious! I don't have enough boost to do this. This is the end of it. Yeah. I won't be back today. <sighs> Holy fuck! My hand just fucking died with that. And that was 10 demos for games you have never heard of. The title of course is clickbait, but hey, I put hours into my videos and I would love getting more views, even if I had to make clickbait titles like this. Once again, I want to say, please give Little Goody to Shoes a try, it was a very fun game and I will probably dedicate a video to it in the future after I finish it. I want to thank you for watching and giving me some of your time, and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, you really have no idea how much seeing like views and likes just motivates you to keep making more stuff. Comment your opinion on the games and if you already knew or liked any of them, please let me know. Once again, thank you for watching the first of what I hope becomes a series of videos and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.